If you've noticed what looks like a large Japanese lantern in downtown Chattanooga under the Wall Street Bridge near the Hunter Museum, you've just discovered what has been one of Chattanooga's best-kept secrets. The Bluff Furnace has been at the site for more than 150 years, but it's just now receiving its historical due thanks to a local art nonprofit and a group of UTC students and their professor. This is the story of the lore of history, the beauty of art, and how it all can come together in a passionate embrace of teamwork and growth. Professor Nick Honerkamp says he's never been involved in an industrial archaeology project that involves art. This is an artistic project, not a historical sign. But at the same time, it impart to people who walk down that switchback the history of the site and in a way that's probably more effective than traditional signage because it's going to be a, an attention grabber. It's 40 foot high, 15 feet across. You can't help but notice it now. Prior to this, it's been sort of an enigma, just the frame of the furnace that was put up 15 years ago to indicate how big it was and that the scale. Now it's going to be still doing that, indicating how big the furnace was, but it'll also be telling this story. Hunter Camp is director of the UTC Institute of Archaeology and teaches in the sociology, anthropology, and geography departments. The story Hunter Camp refers to is one of historical industrial significance to the city of Chattanooga. In fact, Hunter Camp wrote the book on it. Industry and Technology in Antebellum, Tennessee, the Archaeology of Bluff Furnace, UT Press, <laughs> only $19. <laughs> he explains that he inherited the project from his predecessor, Dr. Jeff Brown, who discovered the site and then passed away. I came in in 1980 and found out that I was expected to continue on with the research at the site. So that's exactly what I did. The first day we went out there to cut trees prior to excavation, and one of them hit me in the face and gave me the scar on my right cheek. So I'm real involved with this site. Every it's time I look in the mirror... Um, <laughs> Hunter Camp had a field school at the site, which was followed up with some grant-funded research. We ended up there for about a year and excavated the main components of the site, and that led to journal articles and this book, the UT Press book, and then a real intense interpretive campaign where we had a scale model that was perched up on the bluff. We had signage on the Walnut Street Bridge at the site itself, and we had the world's first for Chattanooga interactive computer program on a computer that was mounted outside under the Walnut Street Bridge. So it was um, really a wonderful experience for me and one that I had no experience in before. I'd never done any industrial archaeology. Prior to its discovery by Dr. Brown, the furnace had virtually disappeared. Historians had known about this heavy industry, early heavy industry, but they didn't know exactly where it was. And Dr. Brown found it. He nailed it and had a field school there and determined that it was indeed, there was something still there. It was overgrown, but it was also covered with about 15 feet of fill from Amnicola Highway construction. So he had a hand-dug field school approach in like 1977 and they started out with like a 10 foot wide square and it ended up by the time they got through the boulders being about two feet wide but they did find furnace remains and so i read that report and it seemed likely that there was more furnace remains so we got heavy equipment in there uh, donated by various construction companies backhoes track hose bulldozers trucks to haul away the dirt and we uncovered the whole thing 15 feet of fill just took it out and then used hand excavation when we got close to the furnace. Hunter Camp says the furnace is important on several levels. For one thing, it was ahead of the game in terms of industrial technology because it was the first blast furnace to use coke as a fuel, which is what they use today. It really launched in the South, and there were maybe one or two furnaces in the whole United States in 1856 that were using coke. So this was a technological innovation that really puts Chattanooga on the map in terms of the history of industry really important. Therefore, the furnace has a national and regional importance. And then, of course, local importance. Robert Cravens was the Iron Master. I mean, he's immortalized today on Lookout Mountain by the National Park Service at his former home. So it's got all three levels of significance at one spot that's right in the middle of downtown Chattanooga. And what began several years ago as an archaeological project of great significance has become an art project of surreal proportions. The artwork that now graces a furnace was conceived by Mark Making founder Francis McDonald. The nonprofit reigned in Hunter Camp and his students who did the actual work. 
this has been an art process. This has totally been, we've been working in the, in the unknown for a long time. You keep stabbing at it and it will unfold, but you have to have faith that it's going to unfold. And mark making is based on that. I mean, truly, we do what we do because we have the faith that there's an artist inside every single person that will, given the right context, will be able to solve aesthetic problems. And we know that it's just a matter of how do you tap into that and how do you hang out in that uncomfortable place until that happens. That's a life issue. You know, if you start projecting and you make up your mind before you have all the variables or you think you know where you're going or da-da-da-da-da-da-da, all that makes for a bad lifestyle too. I mean, this is not just about aesthetics. We teach it as a metaphor, bigger metaphor for life. And to get people to try to be uncomfortable and to hang out in that creative place and let those solutions gel to me that's why we exist we exist to get people to understand that that's okay that that's the best way not only to make art but to live hunter camp discusses the art aspect of the project that he actually worked on and explained what it's like being out of his comfort zone I think that Frances is a minister of artistic faith, and this is her sermon, and it, it's true. And I think that's why the students are so engaged. I mean, they're contributing directly at the beginning, at the formation, at the fabrication, and out at the site. But yeah, it's, it's made me real uncomfortable, because I don't like to do things that I don't have a clue about, because that means somebody else is running the show and knows more than me, and I don't like to be in that position. That's my personality, but it's been great. I mean, it has been great. Hunter Camp says everyone began on a level playing field. In fact, I talked with him while he was in the mark making studio working on the Bluff Furnace art project. I'm the worst painter of the group, or the slowest. And if not, I don't think Francis likes to do better or worse, but she does like to do fast or slow. And she's always telling me, get a move on. And, and that comes from being nervous about how careful the lines should be and that sort of thing. And of course, she keeps saying from 70 feet, it's not going to matter, Nick. And that's right. But it's hard for me to let go of that concern. While working on the artwork for the Bluff Furnace, Honor Camp, who has never actually done what he's considered anything artistic, volunteered for another mark-making project, helping it with tile work for a wall at the Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences. He says he expects to volunteer to work with McDonald on other projects. If you'd like to check out the Bluff Furnace project, head down to the Walnut Street Bridge and look for the lights. For Around and About, I'm Julie Steele.